Welcome to the Earn More, Stress Less podcast with me, Caro Sison. This podcast is for self-employed business owners just like you, who really want to grow their business and become successful and profitable, but without all the stress and hassle. I want to share my 30 years of business experience to show you how simple it can be to earn more money and how you can get organized without needing a business degree or any other qualifications. I'll be talking about the easy steps that you can put in place right now to start earning more money today and to help you get the business that you deserve and dream of. Without further ado, let's get started. This week's podcast is sponsored by Pocket PA, helping self-employed business owners to get organized, understand their finances and do their accounts all in one place using a powerful online tool. If you're serious about making a profit and having a successful business, then using a simple digital web app like Pocket PA is the best way to grow and scale your business. Visit pocketpa.com for more details and start managing your money like a pro today. Hello and welcome to the Earn More Stress Less podcast with me, Caro Sison. So today my guest is Emma Morby and she's a serial entrepreneur, a property developer, trainer, mentor, mother of three extraordinaire and most recently a best-selling author on Amazon of The Simple Guide to Property Investing. Now she's passionate about closing the gender gap in the property development industry and to help people to create true wealth through property and more specifically women. So she works with women to give them time, security and, and money and she's got a successful property company of her own and has developed over eight million pounds worth of property so wow that is some feat I know Emma because I've been in property myself for 20 years so Emma huge welcome and obviously congratulations on your recent book bestseller how are you feeling how are you thank you very much that was a lovely introduction um I'm yeah I'm totally over the moon ecstatic isn't the word um the book was 18 months in the making uh, and and it's actually surprisingly hard to get everything out of your head and into a book and and it be readable for someone to understand. So, yeah, I really I'd like to say I really enjoyed the process. I found it quite challenging, but I'm so glad that it's out there now. It's such a big thing. And I certainly feel you and know your pain because I'm just about six months behind you. But I'm so excited that you've paved the way and I'm hoping that it's going to lead to good things for me as well. So, Emma, you've really had an impressive journey as a serial entrepreneur and property developer. So can you share with us how you got started in this industry and what made, what motivated you really to, to, to get into property development? Because I know it's not um, an easy thing for women. Um, having started myself 20 years ago, there was a tiny number of women in it. And I think, unfortunately, it's very much the same. So how did you get started? Um, so I've always had a love of property. I think I probably have a love of the transformation property gives. So you take an old wreck and you turn it into something beautiful. Um, but I decided to sort of take the full jump and learn everything I could about property. You know, and when I say everything, I mean like planning rules and regulations, um, how you get started through the property development. And I chose property development because I wanted to earn bulk money at the end of a development as opposed to having cash flow throughout um, a project uh, because I had my end goals were were um, quite big. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So I chose property development, and I basically studied and learned. I read books, listened to podcasts. Um, I invited myself to every free event going, um, and I tried to educate myself as much as possible because I realised I realised probably twelve years ago that property gives you the financial freedom. But at the time, I didn't have any spare money to be able to invest heavily into property development. And I was putting it into other businesses to try and help them grow. So seven years ago, I decided I needed to stop that. I needed to pivot completely, carry on with my businesses, but stop plowing money into them to sort of see them grow and start taking some of that money and trying to invest, um, which I did. And I've been. I've been successful at it, but I have to say it's been quite a tough journey. Um, and so for anyone thinking property development's easy money, it's not. You know, you really, really have to know what you're doing. 
And it's the same as when you start in business. You know, you can see these show reels on Instagram that make it look incredible and simple. But the the bare facts of it is being self-employed is hard graft and there isn't any fast track or any sort of get rich quick thing in reality. And I think, unfortunately, there is some perception that some people, I don't want to say men or women, um, put out there that there is, you know, easy ways to do it. And, you know, just follow me. Just let me show you the quick, fast track route. You can cut corners because I've got so much experience type thing. But the reality is that it is actually, you know, I don't want to say the word slog. It it, it is a hard route, but it's very rewarding and the rewards can be immense. Um, But I know how passionate you are about closing the gender gap in property. And what are some, some of the challenges that you faced as a woman in this field and how have you overcome them? Well, as you can imagine, I've probably come across quite a lot of challenges being a female working in the property industry. You know, I'll give you an example of one of those now. But basically, um, one of our recent projects that we brought, when I went on site, uh, I had a tradesperson meet me. I won't mention who, but I had a tradesperson meet me. And the first thing that left their mouth was, oh, are you from the estate agent here to take photographs? It's so funny. And it's it's. (laughs) <laughs> are that they don't even think that you might be paying their bill or their their check that they, they presume it won't be you and that you must be coming to do some administrative task yeah or like you said the estate agent or the photographer yeah and and that's kind of what I come across often when I'm asking for quotes for things people will increase those quotes um because I'm a female and I I don't understand about the value of materials or the costs of materials so they increase the quotes and then when I get them I have to go back and sort of say well actually no timber doesn't cost that much why have you quoted it in at that and and then you get that oh god she knows what she's doing oh okay <laughs> and then they sort of build up a rapport but you do have to go through that unfortunately initially now don't get me wrong they're not not everyone's like that in the industry but what I find is um, it is very male dominated. So you you have to have quite a strong backbone. You have to be willing to stand your ground. You have to be willing to carve out a little space for yourself. Um, and, and hopefully over time, I'll carve out a little space for other people to follow um, and, and grow and become successful in their own right. I think there's a real um, value in handholding people because certainly when you get started, you don't have necessarily the competency to know and to challenge people. So you you may lack that confidence at the beginning. So going alongside somebody by having a mentor or going in a support group like that, I think is really valuable um, to give you that confidence and to actually learn those um, bits of expertise that will enable you to actually know the difference between a high price, a low price, what's acceptable, what isn't. Because when you don't have those benchmarks it can be quite scary to go into a new industry particularly one where it's male dominated and you're you know you're talking about quite large sums of money and you know bricks and mortar there couldn't be anything more bricks and mortar than the property industry so you really have to have your wits about about you um, because you're on quite a fast um, time track I, I know time management is really a crucial aspect of running a business in in any business really but how do you balance your role as a property developer a trainer, mentor, mum of three. Do you have any sort of productivity tips for our listeners? Um, this is probably the one area that is my downfall. I'm going to be honest. Um, my time management is pretty poor, and I've done various things over the time over, over time to to improve it. Um, and not everything has worked. Some bits do, some bits don't. So at the moment, if I'm honest, I have a calendar system, and that calendar system, I have one for my children, I have one for each business. Um, and, and I review that calendar every single morning I get up, but the calendar system only works as well as you putting stuff in. So if I'm driving and someone rings me and says, Emma, have you done this, this, and this? And I go, oh yeah, no, not the third thing. So I need to add that to my calendar. If I get out of the car, then do the shopping and think, I've forgotten to add it to my calendar. I'll do it when I get home. The reality is I get home, I become mum. And then I'm in mum duties for the rest of the night. And, and at the end of the day, I wake up in the morning and I, it's not in my calendar. I've forgotten it. So I think that's a really human response. I have to say I drop the ball reasonably regularly because, you know, when you're running business, 
it's never going to be perfect. Any business, whether it be property or any other business, it's never going to be perfect. And you are going to drop the ball. But I'm really hot on if I drop the ball, how can I fix it? I think that's really key for me. Um, and, you know, mine is to put my hands up. I, You know, I've dropped the ball. Things have gone wrong. Let me look at how I can make this situation better. Sometimes I can't. But let me look at how I can make this situation better. Um, and let me try and learn how I don't do that mistake again basically I love it you are just human Emma and it's it's great to hear so I love it that the productivity tip is to put everything in the calendar but we the reality is that sometimes we forget things but by having a system I think that's great that you've um you know you've got a framework and you know that it does work when you remember to put in but the magic is in the mundane it's those boring bits and pieces that don't light up the world but those are the actually the key components aren't they that actually keep us on track um, to enable it. And I think, you know, it's the same when you're scheduling a build, isn't it? You need to have um, sort of project timelines and stuff. So I would imagine that you're really hot on, you know, having having that overview and then breaking everything down into small steps in order to be able to achieve that end result of the big house. You have to start right down at the foundations and then you have to have your timeline and everybody's working on, you know, on different sprints, et cetera, for the different um, components of the, of the project. Um, but when you've been running um, your, your projects and stuff, obviously you haven't got to be sort of managing eight million pounds worth of uh, properties and stuff just overnight. What do you think are the key factors that really have sort of led to your success? What are the attributes that you have as a person that somebody could perhaps relate to to think, oh, that might be, you know, I'm a little bit like that. So, you know, that might be something that that's really going to be important to help me in my property career. So if there's somebody that's an aspiring entrepreneur in the property industry, what would be your key attributes that you think um, are transferable that could work well in the same industry? Um, I think for me, it's my grit and determination. I enjoy what I do, which always helps. If you enjoy property or if you enjoy the business you're in, it really does help because it doesn't seem such a chore when things are hard. Um, but for me, I, I'm i very much focused on my end goal, what I want to achieve from my end goal. Um, and then I put sort of smaller goals in between that I'd like to hit. And when I hit them, I really celebrate. You know, I, when my book come out, I really I cracked open a bottle of champagne. I sat with my family and I celebrated because that's quite a key milestone for me. Um, and I think anyone who wants to get into property, as long as they understand that you can't learn everything in three days and that you are going to need to learn regularly throughout your property journey, even now there's stuff that I learn on a regular basis. And I improve my knowledge on or there's legislation changes, you know, those sorts of things. And, and I suppose it's like that for every industry, isn't it? But for me, it's it's the learning, the continual improvement. I can see that I'm making improvements and, and sort of being successful at, at celebrating those achievements. Um, and learning to, I suppose, grow as a person. I think anyone coming into business, they have to understand that they've got to grow and learn through various downfalls and various highs, right? But it's a case of improving as you go, getting better as you go. I mean, I look at one of my first social media posts many, many moons ago and, oh my, I was in my dressing gown, you know, talking to people about property because, you know, to me, that was how I, I should have been sharing this information I wanted to share with everyone um, I've improved slightly now I don't wear my dressing gown <laughs> don't you feel you you perhaps connected with an audience at that point because you were relatable because guess what you know at nine o'clock some of us still are in our dressing gowns and if somebody's sort of tuning in to listen to you they it feels less ominous and less you know overwhelming to be listening to somebody in their dressing gown talking about property because she's still got an eight million pound portfolio or you know uh, has has got that expertise and she's just like me so I think that sometimes breaking down those barriers instead of seeing somebody in this corporate slick suit driving around in a fast car you know looking racy and flashy and you know spouting all of this knowledge sometimes it's actually oh my god she's a mum she's just like me she lives in Devon oh my gosh that's near to where I live or those sorts of things which are relatable and I think that is what has 
led to your success that people can align with you. And, you know, I know that you've had um, some great success on TikTok. Um, you've had some viral videos, you know, and you're not sure quite what it was, but could it be your relatability, you know, having over a million views on something that you've recorded, whether you're in your dressing gown or not, Emma, those are things that that people, um, you know, not, not aspire to be in your dressing gown, but to have that ease that you could have a viral video on TikTok and you've done it without any, you know, expertise in TikTok, but because you're talking about something that you're passionate about and knowledgeable about, um, other people are listening to you. Yeah, I, I think that, I think it does help that I am just a normal person. I live a very normal life. Um, I don't drive a flashy car. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't do, I do go on holiday, but I, I don't do. That is very normal. Uh, I don't do, I suppose, you know, as I say, I don't do what I suppose you would typically see branded all over um, sponsored ads for the property industry, you know, sat on your Porsche or sat on, you know, I don't, I don't do that because for me, that isn't how I live life. Um, the reality for me is that, you know, there are good, but there are good times and bad times. People believe them, especially in property. They're like, oh yeah, you're in property development. Oh my God, you must be, you must be loaded. And you're like, well, actually the reality is, you know, during the build, and then getting to sell them at the end, I don't earn a penny from that. I don't take a salary. So I have to earn my money through other lines of business or other lines of um, property that I might have. Because I'm not going to earn while I'm building this 14 block apartment. Um, but people have that belief that I, I probably still do. And, and that's because, unfortunately, we've had this huge wave, especially in the last 10 years. You've probably seen it, to be fair. where um it it it's perceived that people in property are extremely wealthy and that they have all this money coming out of their ears the reality is you're not if you're feeling skin in your property journey for the first 3 years you're doing it right <laughs> quite frankly you're you're doing what you should be doing to create wealth at the end if you're feeling flush and you're living life like it's the best thing in the world never looking at a price tag well you aren't in property for the right reasons but more importantly you're not going to make it in property because you're spending everything you should be reinvesting so yeah I'm quite passionate about that <laughs> yeah I think there are some misconceptions about um you know I think we are flooded with um people that are in in the property industry like you said in their far fast flashy Porsche cars and you know showing this fast life of oh it's so easy and so if you are struggling it's like oh my god I can't be doing it right if it is so easy but you know margins are tight build costs have gone up there isn't um you know as, as ready availability of materials as there were so we have to refactor and cash flow is such a key component it certainly has been in my journey and you're right you're always balancing the numbers and you have spreadsheets and they don't lie because it's all about the numbers it's not about about that beautiful cottage that's got the roses over the top and you have this romantic dream of property development and a little bit of renovation and I know Sarah Beanie has you know enabled us to think about how romantic it could be to um you know be that goal and that dream and there are some lovely property programs with Kirsty and and Phil on the location location but there are some real hard things and it is about the numbers um, all of the time with property, because if it doesn't stack up and you don't know the numbers, you're not going to get the finance, you're not going to get the backing, you're not going to be able to deliver the project at the end or it's going to be cut short and then you're going to have to exit early and then that's when the loss has happened. So it is a real numbers game, isn't it? And Do you find maths is such a key component for you or are you able to use templates that enable you to sort of alleviate some of those um, things? Yeah, so I built a template fairly early on um, for speed, really, more than anything. So I could put in some figures, some numbers, and, and it would spit out a percentage at the bottom to tell me whether the project was viable or wasn't viable. So if it was viable, then I would look in much more detail. I would do way more due diligence around it. Um, if it wasn't viable, it just got scrapped there and then off, off my desk and done. Um, so there are tools that I've used to sort of speed up the process, definitely. And I've learned a lot of those tools along the way. But the key part in, I think, property is being able to spot a good project. So I've now, over time, I've honed my skills. So I can drive down and, you know, a high street and think, oh, that could be converted into, hmm, I think that would be worth. And that comes with experience and time. 
You don't get that overnight. Um, and that's what that's what happens. People sell you the dream that you can have that overnight and they'll say, we'll give you all the, you know, all of the tips and everything that you need. But the reality is when they step away, you're very much left feeling isolated. You've got lots of questions, but no one there to answer them. You know, you want a sounding board, you want guidance, you want someone to say, well done, you're on the right track, or oh my God, stop, you're making an absolute disaster and this is the reason why. You know, you want that, don't you, when you're investing your own money or someone else's money, if you're borrowing money, into a project. So, and I, I feel that that's very much missed when they're selling a dream to someone. And the reality is that you have to put a lot of um, due diligence into a set number of actual um, projects that you're going to do, but an awful lot more go into the hopper at the top. And, you know, you could have a look at, you know, three, five, 10, 20 projects before you actually find that one. It, it's very unlikely that you're going to just rock up and the first one that you see is going to be one that you're going to develop out. Or, it's you know, there are so many sort of key moments that you go through when you're doing your due diligence to enable it to actually tick all the boxes and for it to be a goer and then when it is a goer for you you could be in competition with other people that are also vying for it because they've also done the maths and decided that they wanted and that's when it might become a bit of a bidding war so once you've decided that it is your dream project you might not actually be successful even at the end which I think is why it is such a numbers game, which is why you have to be a little bit detached from thinking, you know what, if it stacks up and I end up getting over the finish line with this one, then I'll run with it. But I've got three or four or five going along on a similar track and whichever one comes out at the end, I know that all of these five will work for me. But because I'm in competition, you've got to have those numbers at the at the get go. Has that been your experience also? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of competition out there, clearly. And there's a lot of money out there at the moment, believe it or not. But um, the, the, the biggest thing I would sort of share with people is put together a, uh, you know, a, a figure that actually works for you. Now, that figure could be £400,000 less than what they're asking for. But that's what works. Sorry, this is an offer for a property. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah. So when you put an offer in, you're going to you're going to you're going to look at it. And you know, I'm talking in the property development world. But if you're if you know, if you're looking to buy a flip, for instance, then you would if it was up at 100,000 and you thought well actually I can make it work at at 65 or 67,000 i always say to people put that offer in and leave it in now you nine times out of 10 will not be successful but what i've had in the past is where i put an offer in I, i'll give an example so recently we put an offer in for i say recently last uh, 18 months ago we put an offer in for uh, a project that was 1.75 million and then we we missed out because somebody else bid higher than us. So we thought, okay, fair enough. And then that fell out of bed because they weren't able to deliver that because their figures didn't stack. Then they sold it to someone else, second in line. We were third in line. They sold it to somebody else, second in line. Um, and again, unfortunately, they had overpriced what they were buying. Um, so when the valuers went out to value it, it all fell apart again. So then they came back to us and were like, yeah, yeah, come on then, you're the third one. We're a year down the line at this point. And they're like, yep, you're the third one. Would you like to accept it? I said, yes. But actually, our value's gone down. It's now 1.6 million. And they were like, well, they want the 1.7 that you I put 1.6 in. They're like, oh yeah, but they want 1.7. I say, well, that's it's 1.6 or nothing. You know, that's that's the price we can make it work at. Oh, well, it's 150,000 pounds short. Yes, I know. That's the price it can work at. Do you want it or not? Oh, well, uh, yes, okay, fine we'll take it. I was like, okay. And it was like, I pulled somebody's eyeball eyelashes out or something like that. You know, they were were like, Oh, well, we'll have to take it. And you, you know, if I hadn't put that offer on the table, if I hadn't have challenged the estate agent and I hadn't have pushed him, we wouldn't have got that site. If I just thought, Oh, the figures don't stack. So it's not going to work. I'm going to move on. Often you miss out on good opportunities because people who put in for the figures that are overinflated lose out and then they come back to you anyway so don't always discount everything but um definitely look at it and think actually if i can make this work if it's a hundred thousand they want and i can make it work at seventy thousand, that's what my offer is going to go in at 
And I'm aware that these figures might sound astronomical, you know, talking about in the millions for people, because when you're starting out, you don't have that sort of budget and you don't have the expertise. You're not in that bracket of buying. So for somebody that might be looking at just going in at entry level, what would you suggest is the minimum amount of equity or cash reserve or deposit that they would need to be putting into starting on the road of property development? What would you be suggesting, Emma? If you're looking at property development, I would imagine you're probably going to need around about £50,000. Okay. And if somebody's wanting to just get started with a property portfolio and they don't want to do the development side, but they want to perhaps go in because there are lots of different ways to, you know, get involved in property. It doesn't have to be development and doing the build and the renovation stuff. There is um, another option that you talk about with um, showing people how to build a property portfolio where they own the properties and then they rent it out and they grow their property portfolio. So what would be an entry level? level for somebody perhaps that wants to not do the development side of things? So there's lots of ways to invest in property. um, And I mean, lots of ways. So, you know, if your budget is anything from sort of 5,000 to 15,000 pounds, then the reality is you can invest in service to accommodation, um, rent to rent. Uh, You can invest in... These are um, all different strategies that are available because that's what you yes so that's sorry. fine I I'm know being you very used a flippant, word earlier I? about a flip <laughs> and I, I'm you know we're, we're very familiar with these and again it's about people feeling on the outside that they don't know these terms and that they'll never know what's going on and how would they get that education I know that these are all the sorts of things that you teach as a trainer and a mentor on you, you know your courses but just getting your book in the first instance is a fabulous you know entry level way of being able to start to get familiar with some of the terminology and I think if you are interested in moving into property it's really important that you start listening to conversations listening to podcasts um, you know going to some meetings and just getting comfortable hearing people talk not needing to participate at the beginning but starting to grow your vocabulary and knowledge so that when people start to talk about the rent to rent and the service to accommodation you've, you've heard it once before it's not a brand new thing because at the get-go you will not know what these um, different strategies are or which one might suit you and that's totally fine because you're at the starting line and so I think it's it's really important that people don't feel overwhelmed firstly by the terminology or the vocabulary that it's new to them and also thinking oh my god 1.75 million that's such a a big thing I don't know you know obviously I don't have that sort of money but there are entry level um, ways to start in the property market and that's why I think you're perfect to be sharing that that sort of information so sorry to interrupt there just go go back into where you were flowing yes no I I, you know I do forget how easy it is for me to have these things roll off my tongue and and other people not necessarily understand that and I do experience that when I'm in a room talking to people and they're like what does that mean and I think oh okay because I've been used to this for quite a few years um and it is something we do so as part of we've got a 12-month program um which uh, is called property unwrapped and in that 12-month program we do that we we will teach you not just terminology but we also go through um, the, the six different strategies, depending on how much funding you have or how much you want to risk, we'll teach you six different strategies. We'll teach you about planning regulation. We'll teach you about how to set you know, your company up safely so it's the most tax efficient way. Because all of this stuff, I can't teach you this stuff in like five days. You know, like a property university, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Because it, there, it, is it, to go. there are these three days or one day <laughs> courses that people. Yes seem to think oh my god I'm going to be an expert after 24 hours and it's like oh my gosh you have just literally had a taster (laughs) session and it's something that you know you do need a period of time to allow it to sink in it's just too much overwhelm to be expected to you know leave at the end of three days with a whole toolkit to be able to go out and spend large sums of money that that just you know there, there's a thing called calculated risk taking. And I think it's really important that you don't rush in. You know, it's great to be enthusiastic, over enthusiastic even. Um, but you need to realise this is um, a, a period of learning. This isn't just a one a one minute um, sort of, or, you know, a small snapshot in time where you're just going to be equipped with all the bits that you need to know. It is a gradual, let's get the basics. Let's build on these foundations. And that's why I love what you're doing by doing it over a 12 month duration and starting by unpacking all of the terminology and starting to support people on that journey. Uh, Yeah, I think a lot of people hear the word 12 months and they think, oh my God, that's such a long time. And you think, well, in that time, 
I'd hoped that you would have got off the bench and started investing in something. But it takes that long to learn, to deliver. But doing that investment within your space, a safe space and your cocoon of su- support and stuff where you're handholding people is such a great place to be doing that because doing it on your own is super scary and not having somebody as a sounding board, um, particularly if it's your first time, um, you know, that, that sounds like a nightmare for me. And, and there are people that, that do that. Um, but, but I know that for me as a woman, I would love to be surrounded by people having that um, expert on hand in your uh, back pocket on your speed dial on your whatsapp or whatever it is um in your support network to be able to just um hold hold your hand and i know that the property market is you know constantly evolving we've got economic factors at the moment which impact the industry we've got mortgage rates going through the roof it can seem a really scary time so is now still the right time to be looking at these sorts of things or is there ever a right time so the, the yes is the answer um there's always a right time to buy um And now is possibly one of the better times to buy because property is starting to come down in value. I don't see we can I don't think we'll see the crash of 2008, but it's definitely coming down in value. Um, What I would say is property is pretty cyclical in the sense that it has uh, highs and lows and they traditionally run over 10 to 12 years. And as you learn that knowledge, you realize that actually you can get in on a low and get out on a high if you want to over a period of 10 or 12 years or you can keep it. Um, traditionally, when property prices slow down in sale, for instance, um, you, you know, rental prices boom. So the rental market goes up massively. We're talking hundreds of pounds massively in some areas. Um, so it's having that knowledge and and keeping ahead of the, the game in that sense. But also you need to learn about all of the legal side of things as well, because legislation changes all the time in the property industry. Now, I learn. So I learn a lot of my sort of up to date resource from big estate agents like Savills, um, Rightmove. They produce quarterly and annually reports and they're quite timely reports. And they'll show you, you know, um, how the property market's doing, whether there's been a drop in percentage, whether the rental market's increased or decreased, um, which are quite good to follow. Um, But I also uh, follow and subscribe to a lady called Tessa Shepperton. Now, she's a property lawyer. Uh, and she shares quite a lot of legal changes that happen in the industry that may affect you as a landlord or a property um, developer or owner of property. Um, and again, her knowledge and being subscribed to her means that I can, you know, ask those questions. I, I don't understand what that means. You know, you've just mentioned this bit of legislation. What does that actually mean? Because <laughs> I don't always know this bit of legislation that's coming out that has a huge impact. You know, Section 24 was one of those bits of legislation that came out. I own my companies in a limited company, so it doesn't matter for me as such. But Section 24 does have an impact to people who own property personally and who decide to rent it out. Uh, so f- for me, I was like, well, how does Section 24 affect me? And, and is it going to affect me? And what does it involve? So although she spoke about it and I got a few tips from her, I had to go back to my own accountant and say, I need much more detail around this. Is it going to have any impact to me? And he was like, yeah, no, none. Oh, brilliant. And it's all about having that power team, isn't it? Because you do need to, when you're doing a big project or you're starting to move into property, you are going to need a good accountant. You will need a solicitor that you're going to be drawing on. These professionals the planning experts the the relationships that you have with builders and contractors and uh just managers overall as uh, it's not just about getting a load of bricks that are just going to be thrown down and just put this house up or um you know buying a property putting a lick of paint on it you do need to rely on professionals to manage the finances and the the money at the right time so that you're being tax efficient and complying with the law so it's definitely never sort of a bubble of isolation where you're just going to be there um, with your checkbook signing things and then just looking in your bank account checking that you've got a profit going on so I think that that's the beauty of um, understanding and going on a course where you recognize what your power team needs to look like and you know you putting um, people in touch with with the right experts in order to be able to do that. Um, Emma thank you so much it's been really enlightening hearing part of your journey and again you know so excited about your book so if people want to connect with you where's the best place for them to go and find you and reach out and and get more information 
So they can find us uh, at the website, which is www.thefemalepropertyexpert.co.uk, or we have social handles on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, and it's at thefemalepropertyexpert.co.uk. Um, what I've started doing recently for people is uh, a lot of people come to me and say, I just don't, I, ha- I have money, but I don't have enough money to save to invest. So I've started to put out onto my social channels ways in which they can earn extra money through different avenues um, and so kind of save that money, I suppose, and, and become more entrepreneurial. Let's put it that way and save the money and then have some money to invest in property, you know, in, in the next sort of 12 months, 18 months. So that's something else we've started doing that's different that people might find helpful. So if they're sat here listening to it thinking, I'm running my own business, it's it's great, but it doesn't it doesn't generate me as much money as I hope to be able to save. There are other ways in which you can generate money, not through property or your business, for instance. And if you want to get started and you know, money is extremely tight now, I know that, then that, that's why the book's been created. You know, you can you can buy a copy of the book from Amazon, um, The Simple Guide to Property Investing. And that goes through quite a lot of knowledge. Um, it gives you helpful spreadsheets, letters to, you know, pre-written letters, those sorts of things that you might need to start your journey. Perfect. So that's sort of really entry level and they can pick that up on Amazon. Super simple and start reading and getting that basic foundation level in right from the get go. And if they follow you on their socials, um, they, will they be able to see you in your dressing gown <laughs> or have you stopped that now? In my early days, they'll be able to. I don't, I'm not as bad now. I mean, they'll probably see me with no makeup. Some days I wear makeup. Some days I think, I'm just not going to bother. I haven't got enough time. Who cares? <laughs> oh, Emma, thank you so much. It's been lovely. And it's very timely to say that I can't believe this is the 52nd episode, literally a year's worth of podcasting I've been going. So it's lovely to have you on it to celebrate that. And I'm going to be bringing out a season two um Well, I'm I'm not exactly sure when it's going to be starting, but we're starting to do the prep for it. So if you follow us on pocketpa.gb, you'll be able to get um, updates as to when the new episodes are coming out for season two. We're doing a little pivot and going to be doing a spotlight on some different aspects of self-employment. But it's all in the same theme of working less and um, earning more with less stress. So until next time, have a wonderful um, summer ahead of you and we will catch up again very soon. Thanks for listening to the Earn More, Stress Less podcast with me, Caro Sison. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then do hit subscribe so we can catch up again soon. And please kindly leave a review if you've got a moment and share with anyone else that you think this podcast could help on their self-employed journey. If you're ready to make bigger breakthroughs in your business life and want to get way more organized and understand your finances the really simple way, then start your very own 14-day free trial today using the super powerful software tool Pocket PA that I made for my own son and daughter. Go to pocketpa.com forward slash podcast and let's get you on the way to earning more money and stressing much less. Have a great week, whatever you're doing.